2021, we can finally say 20, hindsight is 2020, and it's true. Um, so, so that's something to celebrate. Um, we're excited about that. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you're joining us online on Facebook or YouTube, um, we're so glad that you're joining us here today as we get together to worship the King. Um, and as we head into 2021, as we, as we head into a new year, um, it's that time for kind of setting new routines and, and, and getting into new, you know, a lot of times healthier rhythms and things like that. And so you're going to hear us over the next couple weeks, this week, and next, next week especially, we're going to be talking a lot about groups because we know, we know that in every case, Life is better connected, that we need people in our lives that are deeply invested in us. Uh, and one of the ways we do that here at Northwest is through our group's ministry. And so we're encouraging everybody this year, as we refocus, we want everybody to get in a group. You can do that by going to nwcc.net slash groups. Um, we've got a list of our groups online. You can kind of browse through them, see what ones might work for you. You can contact the leader, ask them um, a little bit about the group, and you can sign up that way. So I'd encourage you, nwcc.net slash groups. Find a group today. We're going to be kicking off our group's uh, term coming up here next week on the 10th, and so we're really excited about that. But if you're, like, not so sure about that, like, going online and, and emailing somebody you don't know sounds a little weird, um, we, we've got another opportunity for you to, to meet some people and get connected. Next Sunday, right after church, we're going to be doing an amazing event um, as we pack meals with IDES, International De Disaster Emergency Services. Uh, we're going to be packing meals that are going to be sent overseas uh, to different orphanage, orphanages uh, that, that IDE supports around the world. And so as we do that, we're going to pack several thousand meals together. Um, as we do that, it's going to be an event where you can meet some of our group leaders, group leaders who are starting new groups, group leaders who have space in their group to add more people. They're going to be there. They're going to be wandering around talking to different people as we pack meals together. Um, ask them questions. Ask them questions about their group, about themselves. Get to know them a little bit. It's going to be an amazing way to get connected with groups as we kick off our group's term next week with our group's launch. So, um, but if you're not interested in groups or you're, maybe you're already in a group, we want you to come to the meal packing event next week. It's going to be right after church church in the student center. Uh, we're going to be packing thousands and thousands of meals. Like I said, it's going to be absolutely awesome as we do that as a way to, to serve the world and have a greater impact together. But this morning, uh, we're excited for worship. So let's go ahead and we'll pray together and then we'll jump right in to, to worshiping the King today. Father, thank you so much for everything that you have done for us. God, thank you for the opportunity we have to be here to worship together in 2021 for the first time. And God, we just pray that you would fill this space, that, that you would draw us close to you this morning as we sing your praises as we dig into your word. God, would you touch each one of our hearts and make us more like you? We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Northwest Christian Church, how you guys doing this morning? Let's all stand and worship the Lord together. I'm running. 
let me return to you again. Let's sing it out. This is our prayer this morning. Lord, let me burn for you again. Let me return to you again. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart till I am a soul. the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever save worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you sing holy and holy there is no one like you there Beside you, open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life.
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Great job singing to you guys. God bless you. You may be seated now. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Y'all made it. Good job. Happy New Year. <laughs> we made it to 2021. Praise Jesus. I know I'm excited for that. I'm excited. Um, man, it's so good to be here to start the year together in this place with all y'all. Um, man, I, it's just, I, I cannot wait for this year. I, I'm, I've, been, I, I've been waiting for 2021 for a long time. And I think a whole lot of us have. It's just kind of we're in that place. And so I'm, I'm excited for this. A couple quick things before we pray, before we get into the sermon time. I want to let you know that um, if you're kind of like, wow, it's pretty full. I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, I don't know. Um, right through those doors, through our prayer room, um, or you can go out around the hall, whatever. But in our student center, we do have overflow seating in there. If you would like, I just, I need a little more space. Like, it's totally fine. You can go in there. Or I know we don't have kids stuff this morning because, um, it's you know, it, it, we just don't. So if you say, hey, you know what, um, I, 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 I want to. I need a little more space, or you know, my one of my kids wants to run. My son is probably in there playing pool right now, running around. I think um, I, I really don't know. Uh, he's a pastor's kid, so he like knows how to get in every place. So like he lives here, so um, he may be in there. So if you want to go hang out with my son, he's probably in there. It's totally fine. That's great. That's absolutely fine. Um, you can do that. It's just right through those doors in our student center. If you didn't grab a communion cup on the way in. They're at the tables uh, here and here. There's got some out in the lobby. Make sure you grab one of those. We're going to take communion together at the end. Uh, if you're watching at home, you're watching online, make sure you have some communion elements ready because we're going to get to that at the end. And I'm going to give you some time to think and to pray and to reflect on Christ. We've got a, gr a lot of great stuff we're talking about today. And so I want to I give you that space to think. And so that's going to come toward right at the end of the sermon. So be ready for that. Uh, as far as offering for tithes and offerings, um, we don't pass trays anymore. We don't pass the baskets or anything. We ask people to either give online, nwcc.net slash give, or if you're here present in the room, you can, at all the doors on the way out, there's, there's boxes. You can just drop your tithes in there uh, and your offerings in there. And just want to say, I just have to say this. This, this is kind of an aside. It's, it, you all have been so amazing through all of this COVID stuff, through all of the ups and the downs and through the changes and the craziness. And, and there, I know it, it's been, for some people, it's been this like, what, what are we doing? I don't know. We got one, wait, one service, two services, online, were we virtual? I don't know. Like, it's just, it, thanks for hanging in there with us as we've tried to figure this out too because we're all in this together. Uh, we're all trying to figure this stuff out, and it seems like there, even still, things are changing every week, and something's new, and something's different, and this works, and this doesn't, and, this, and so, man, I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate your, your faithfulness, your generosity. I appreciate all of you in this place, and I cannot wait for what God's going to do in all of our lives in 2021, because I'm convinced, I'm convinced of this, I'm convinced that no matter what, even if 2021 is a bigger dumpster fire than 2020 was, like I, no matter what, God is moving. Amen. Convinced of that, 100%. And so I'm excited. So let me pray for us, and then we're going to jump right into our sermon together. Okay, so let's pray. Here we go. Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for this time together in this place. God, I thank you for everybody that's physically present here in this room. I thank you for everybody that's watching online right now, or, 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 and even for the people who are going to watch later. That are, that are going to watch later and just and engage with us as we begin this new year. God, I, I, I am. I'm, I'm excited for this year, may, probably in a way that I haven't been excited in a while. And, and I know I, I feel this every year, but this year's special. It's different. And I know because I've seen you move through the course of 2020 in so many ways, in so many lives. God, and, and so I'm, I have this expectancy for 2021. Because you are bigger than anything that we're facing. 
You are, you are greater than any problem that may come before us, no matter what that may be. You're greater than any shift or change or move. or God, you're bigger than all that. You, you, you are good, and you are on your throne. And God, I'm excited about that. And so as we begin this year together, as we talk about what we're focusing in on for 2021, and it, really it's a refocus on what's most important, God, I pray that you will speak today, that you will speak into hearts, that you will speak into lives, that you will speak into every single person in this room, every single person that's watching online. God, that we will be encouraged and we will be excited and we will be challenged and ready to face tomorrow because you are with us. You are with us always to the end of the age. So God, speak into us now. We love you so much. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So like I said, I am, I am so excited for this year. I am excited for 2021. I have been waiting for this day, to be, to, just for this whole brand new beginning, for this new start. But he, it's so weird. Like I was thinking about this the other day. So I, was, I was kind of praying through the sermon and what I'm talking about and all this sort of stuff. You know, the calendar changed one day. You flip to 2021. It's now, now when you, well, I don't know anybody who writes checks anymore. But if you write checks or if you write dates on anything, like you have to write 2021 instead of 2020. Like, like I, I know that's shifted, but realistically, nothing changed from December 31st to January 1st. I mean, not really. I mean, when you really think about it, like it, it, nothing actually changed, but we feel different, don't we? Like it happens every single year, and it always catches me. Like every year, like I get to December, and I feel like, okay, I'm just gonna hang on through the end of this month, and then January first, I'm gonna be different. Like I could be, I could be different December fourteenth. Like I could choose, on like on December fourteenth, today's the day I'm gonna be different. But I don't. Most people don't. Like we wait until January because there's something like philosophically, like in our hearts, we it's different because it's now a brand new year. I don't know if it's because maybe like the, the tax rolls change or like something. I don't know what it is, but, but there's something like it's, it's just part and parcel. It's, 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 we always see it as like this brand new beginning. Like, and everybody feels this. I, 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 it's, just, it's just how it works. I go to this gym just down the street called the local gym. And to be fair, like I confess to y'all, like, and they say confession is good for the soul, right? So I'm, I'm going to confess. I'm going to get this off my chest. I haven't been in like six weeks. So like, <laughs> to be fair, but, but, uh, that's, that's the place I go. And, and I'll tell you this. I'm not going to go the entire first week of January. I'm just going to tell you right now. I'm just not going to go. Because here's why. Right? Every gym in the United States of America, that first week of January is packed. Just, they bring in extra equipment for one week. And they, they pack because everybody comes in. Because we get this. It's like January 1. All right. New Year's resolution. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to lose the COVID-19. I'm going to, okay, we're going to do this, right? So I'm going to get in the gym. And people go for like two days or four or six days or whatever. And they even have it auto drafted out of their bank account. And then they never set foot in the gym again until maybe like July. They'll go once and be like, no, nah, I'm not doing that again. Like, let's just be honest. Okay. Like, so I'm just, I just don't go that whole first week. I'm just not going to go back. Might be a week and a half. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, maybe two weeks, maybe four or seven. I don't know. Like, we'll figure it out. Like, but, it, but anyway, because that's how we feel. Right? We, all, we all make these resolutions. Like I, I've done it. My family, I'll tell you this. Like, we, we've decided that 2021 is the year of the Rice family. Like, so what, what we're going to do is we've decided we're, we're going we're gonna to spend a lot more time together as a family than we did in 2020. And I know people are like, wow, man, Quarantine time wasn't enough for you people. Like, like, but, but I was busier in quarantine this whole 2020 season than I've been in my entire ministry career. It was crazy. It was just kind of this backwards thing. And so we're, we're hunkering down kind of as a family. We're going we're gonna to take more vacations. We're going camping more. We're going to do more family stuff. We're going to invest in our friends more. We're gonna, like, it's, it's the year of the rices, right? Because that's, that's, that's our New Year's resolution. We had this whole big family meeting about it. Right, right. Then we, we had a whole week. It's, I, I was like, all right, children, come family meeting time. They're like, oh no, what did we do wrong? I'm like, no, no, this is good. And then, uh, uh, at least for me, it's good. I don't know. We'll see what my teenager thinks about that. But uh, so, like, we do that. So, and I bet you've done some. I bet you've made resolutions. I, I, I bet, even though fundamentally nothing actually changed in reality, it's a new beginning, right? So, I want you to do this for me, okay? We're, we're gonna do this. I want you to think about one thing you wanna change in 2021. What's one resolution you made? If you're watching online, you gotta do this to one resolution you made. And I want you to share it really, really quickly with somebody sitting around you. Ready, set, go. One thing, one thing you're gonna change. One resolution you made this year, because I bet you did it. I bet everybody did it. 
It's a new beginning. I bet everybody did it. One thing, quick, 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 quick. You got to talk fast. You got to talk as fast as me. And that's saying something. Come on, you got to do it. Come on, we can do this. One thing. Right? See, I, I know. I, like everybody, you know, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to get in the word again. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to spend time more, more time with I'm going to get my finances in order for the first time. This is going to be great. Like even though nothing really changed, even though fundamentally the world continued to spin as it has always spun, right? We, we feel like now it's a new day. It's a new beginning. It's something we feel deep in our soul. And when you go to the Bible, when you look at the Bible, the Bible is filled with moments just like this. The Bible is filled with new beginnings. There's so much we can learn from, the, from Scripture about new beginnings. And, and when we get to a season like this, okay, how do we live? How do we engage? There's so much we can learn just from the pages of the Bible. Like, like this, the very, very first page of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis 1, 1, it, it talks about a beginning. And there's so much we can learn just right here in this one verse. Genesis 1, 1 says it like this. You could probably quote this. A lot of us can't say, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Right, it talks about this, a brand new beginning. It's the beginning of everything. It's the first day ever in all of history. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we learn about a God who loves us at this beginning. We learn about a God who created, a God who's all-powerful, who's all-knowing. If you read the first three chapters of Genesis and it talks about the beginning, you learn about all kinds of things, about how God made the world, what he did on each day. You learn about how much he loves his creation. One of my favorite days is day four of creation. Day four is where God makes the sun, the moon, and the stars. And if you go back and read it, it's in Genesis chapter one. Go back and read when God, on day four, what he does. Because he says he's, he makes the sun to rule the day, the moon to rule the night. And he goes on, he, he describes that and he goes, oh yeah, and the stars. <laughs> And if you, if you saw anybody, anybody see the, the, the Christmas star? You went out and looked at the Christmas star. Anybody did that? Okay, like, you know, we, I tried to do that, and there was too much ambient light. I couldn't find it, it was, but it was, it was just a cool thing, right? It was just this miraculous thing of people you hadn't seen in 800 years. Right? It was really cool. Have you ever been out in a place where you see all the galaxy, Milky Way galaxy spread out, all these sun? The Bible talks about it. It's like, oh, yeah, and the stars. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, and the other planets and the solar system. It's, it's whatever. It's kind of an afterthought. And then it gets to talking about humans, and how God breathed into humans. And, and, and it sets up this, this, this theological truth that as great as the galaxy is, as great as the stars are, billions and billions and trillions of stars, that's all I mean. God cares more about humanity and you and me than he does about all of that stuff. Because, oh yeah, the stars. But people, oh, right? It's a weird thought, isn't it? But that's, how the, that's what the Bible teaches right at the beginning. There's so much we can learn in just that very beginning. The Bible is filled with new beginnings. Psalm chapter one is another beginning. It's the beginning of the book of Psalms. Psalms is the longest book in the entire Bible, 150 different songs. The Psalms, it, Psalm is another word for song. So it's, just a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hymn book in the middle of your Bible, right smack dab in the middle. And the beginning of, of that, that book, Psalm chapter one, it's, another, it's a beginning. Right? And it says this, I'm gonna read the whole Psalm because there's so much in here that we can learn at the beginning. It says this, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. At the beginning of the book of Psalms, just another beginning. We, we learn how to keep our way pure, how to walk in God's way, how to, how to live this life. And it talks about building our life on this foundation, on, on the foundation of the word, by meditating on it day and night, by studying it, by digging in. That's how we keep our way pure. That's how we live the way God calls us to live. That's where we find life is in the pages of the book. We, we learn this in the beginning. We learn that sometimes the wicked prosper on this earth, but at the end, they're, they're, they're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> that's not gonna be a happy time for them at the end because they, they blow away like chaff, even though it may seem like, oh, that's not fair. They're not godly and they're, look at that, they have a better house than me. God says, they're like the chaff. They, at the end of the day, they don't, they don't amount to much. Trust me. Follow my ways. Psalm teaches that right there. Book of Matthew, chapter one, verse one. 
It's the beginning of the New Testament. We learn some things in this chapter. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, we learn some incredible things. It says, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And then it goes on and it lists this whole list, all these generations of, of people that led to Christ. And we learn in that, that, that the New Testament is all about this guy named Jesus. In fact, we learn that the entire Bible is all about this guy named Jesus. We learn that all of human history is, is set up in such a way to bring about Christ to bring Christ to the earth, that everything fits together in this incredible package designed and created by God himself to bring Christ to the earth. And that's the center of everything, and it's the focus of everything, and it's supposed to be the center of everything that we do. The entire Bible is about Jesus. We learn that at the beginning, the beginning of the New Testament. And there's another beginning that, I don't, it may be my favorite beginning, and for a lot of people, it seems like the end, but it's actually a beginning. And it's my favorite. It's the beginning of the church. It's the beginning of the church of Jesus Christ here on this earth. And it comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 28. And I want to spend some time talking about this beginning because this beginning of the church, what many call the Great Commission, this beginning sets the tone for the church all churches everywhere is supposed to be how it works. It sets the beginning. It sets the tone for individual Christians and our entire life. Our whole life is supposed to be built around this, this passage, this thing. Like everything we do. Because it's the beginning of the church. Of you and me and our fellowship. It gives us our marching orders. It shows us our purpose in life. What we, what we were put here to do. What we were created to be. It teaches us. In Matthew chapter 28. So let's look at this together and then we'll, then we'll break it apart. Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 18. It says this, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the launch point for the church. These are the marching orders for the church. This is where Jesus says, okay, listen. I, 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 all authority in heaven, on earth, has been given to me. All right, so, so this is what, what the Bible has been building to. I, this is the culmination of human history right here. And now I'm going to go away. I'm going to ascend into heaven right after Jesus ascends into heaven. Right, he says, after this, I'm going to leave the mission to you guys and to all the people that come after you. And here's what you're supposed to do. Here's the, the, the mission. Here's the march. Here's, here's what church is supposed to be. Here's what Christians' lives are supposed to be about. Is this. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I've commanded. And I'm with you to the end of the age. And this year at Northwest, this year at Northwest, we are going to be focusing, in, 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 a, in a lot of ways, this is kind of a refocus for us on the Great Commission. We're going to be focusing on this. And, and my hope and my prayer is that every single person here, every single person who's watching online, you'll come to this place where you say, you know what, I want this to be my focus too. I want this to be the focus for my family. I want this to be the focus for my career. I want this to be the focus for my education. I want this to be the focus for everything that I do in this life. I want it to be focused around this, this great, these, these, these marching orders that Jesus gave to his followers to go make disciples, baptize, teach, all these things. My hope and my prayer is that this will be your focus because this is what we're focusing on in 2021 here at Northwest. And we're using three words to help us. Three words that you're gonna hear a lot. Three words, I talked about it last week. If you watched online, we're gonna dig into it a little bit more today. Three words that are gonna help us focus on, okay, what, is this, what does this mean? What does this look like? What is this mission? We're refocusing our, our efforts and our energies and all this stuff on this, okay, what does that look like? And the first word we're gonna, we're gonna fo focus on, we're gonna talk about is the word win. Win, winning people to Christ. Because this has got to be part of our life. This has got to be part of our focus. It says right there at the beginning. Look at verse 19. Matthew 28, verse 19. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. At the beginning, at the beginning of the church, at the launch of the church, we were designed, Christ it designed us to be a missionary people. To go and proclaim the gospel 
to go and evangelize, to go and reach people who are not followers of Jesus, teach them and show them who Christ is, baptize them into Christ, and then send them out to do it again. We were designed from the very beginning to share our faith with other people. And this is an all people thing. This is an everybody thing. We're all in this mission together. We're all supposed to be sharing our faith with people everywhere we go. This is, supposed, this is the focus. This has got to be the center. This isn't just for professional Christians like me. People who are paid to be pastors. This is for everybody. This is for kids. This is for senior citizens. This is for, for men. This is for women. This is supposed to be for everybody. We're supposed to be focused on winning people to Christ. And people ask me, why? Why, why has that got to be such an important thing? I mean, like, and, and, and it's always weird when I have this conversation with people, when we talk about evangelism. And, and, and you can see, you can, you can just kind of feel the pushback because it's a weird thing to say. Like, okay, why should I care that other people come to Jesus? Because like, like we don't, we, that it takes a real amount of strength and honesty to ask that question, at least to somebody else. I, I think we, a lot of us, we ask that on, on our own in our hearts. Okay, why is this such a big deal? Okay, well, you know, but, but I'm not, I don't, I don't know the answers and I'm not equipped and I'm not trained. And so why, why me? Why can't it be somebody else that does it, God? Why, why, is this, why is this part of the commission? Isn't that just for the apostle? Like we have all these, these, these conversations in our brain. And, and, I, and when, I, when I'm able to have a, this conversation, when I'm able to talk to people about the why, I, I, go, I, I, I do something weird, and this is just how I'm wired. It's, just, it's weird. I, I take people to the book of Ecclesiastes, and I say, oh, let me tell you the why. Let me tell you why this is central. Let me tell you why our job is to win people to Christ, why it's part of the Great Commission, why it's an everybody thing. I go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 2. And again, I don't know, that's weird. Like, well, like well, shouldn't you go, like, aren't there places in Romans? Like, the whole, what if the Romans wrote? Like, I mean, there's, okay. I go to Ecclesiastes 7, 2. And again, it's, you can go somewhere else. That's totally fine. You don't have to do what, things the way I do, but this is just this is how J. Rice works, okay? And I say this, all right, Ecclesiastes 7, 2. It's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of, fat, of feasting. For this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. Basically what Solomon, the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes, says is like, listen, when you go to a funeral, you need to remember, this is the end game for every single person. Every single one of us, and I know this is morbid to start in January, like, Jay, come on, can't you be encouraging? Wow, like you're such a downer, man. Like, wow, man, you're killing me here, Smalls. Like, it's like, not a, but everybody is gonna die. Everybody, that's the way of humanity. Because of Adam and Eve in the fall, this is our destiny, is that this body will cease to exist and my soul will go stand before the Lord. That's the destiny of all humans. right? And, and, and here's the thing, if we really believe the Bible is true, if we really believe that the words in this, on these pages are the words of God, we need to know when we go, and when every other human being that has ever walked this planet, when that soul goes and stands before the Lord, you will end up in one of two places. Everybody, every human being, your kids, your grandkids, your coworkers, your friends, the people you don't like, everybody, you're gonna stand there before God and he's gonna send you either to heaven for eternity or he's going to send you to hell for eternity. And it will be based on your decision and what you do with Christ. That's the end game for every single person. And if we're Christians, if we're followers of Jesus, and we know this to be true, when we look at other people, we should look and say, man, are they going to spend eternity with the Lord? A am I going to see them for forever? Am I going to worship with them? For eternity. A am I going to stand for them? Or are they going to go to a place that no, nobody, I, we shouldn't want anybody to go? Are they going to spend eternity in hell? Where are they going to go? And that should drive us. If we care even a little bit about people, just even the tiniest little bit about humans, that should keep us up at night. It should cause us to go, man, I gotta tell everybody. I gotta tell everybody I know. I gotta tell them and tell them and tell them until they're sick of hearing it from me and then I gotta take them to other people who will tell them and tell them and tell them until they're sick, of, until, they, until, they, until they make a decision. This has gotta be central. 
One of, the, one, of the, one of the reasons that we're doing the book of Revelation, starting next week, we're going to study the book of Revelation for 12 weeks, is we're going to look at not just the signs of Christ's return, which I believe, in personal opinion, is, is coming soon. I believe it's going to happen soon. I really do. So we're not just going to look at those signs, but I want to impress upon all of us, this is so important, impress upon all of us that Christ is coming soon, and that means... We're all going to stand before the Lord, and it's going to be one eternity or the other, and that should drive us. That should drive us if we care even the slightest bit for our friends and our coworkers and our neighbors and the people we come into contact with. That's why it's in the Great Commission. Win people to Christ. Go make disciples. That's got to be, that's got to be huge for us. So we're going to focus on that in 2021. We're going to teach you how to share your faith more, how to share your faith better. We're going to answer some of the big questions. We're going to, we're going to dig through that together. We're going to have all this different stuff that's going to happen in that because it's part of our refocus in 2021 on the Great Commission. So we win people to Christ. That's the first thing the Great Commission teaches us, and it's got to be central to all of our lives individually, not just here at the church. The second thing we do is also in Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, go back to verse 20. It says, okay, we win these people to Christ. We baptize them into Christ, right? And then we teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. And our key word for that is the word train. We train people to be disciples. We don't want to just say, okay, great. Um, you've heard about Jesus and you've decided you want to follow Jesus. We baptize you into Christ. Awesome. Good luck with that. <laughs> We've we got to be trained to be disciples. It's not something that comes natural to us. Following and obeying this book, it's not natural. It's not normal. It's, it's not normal. It's not what anybody in the world says we should do. Like it is, it is countercultural here. This is oppositional to the way of the world and on pretty much every level imaginable. And so there's training that's required to be a disciple. I used to run. I had this season of my life where I, I was a runner and I actually liked it and I was actually pretty good at it. Uh, I, you know, I was, I was running six to eight miles a day. That was kind of my thing. And I was doing it just, just about every single day. And I loved it. And I look forward to it. And I get up in the morning. I'm like, oh, I get to go run. Woo. Like, and now I look back on that young self and I'm like, he's an idiot. What was his problem? Like, you know, so, but, it, but I didn't start out right out of the gate being able to run six miles. The first time I ran, like, and I, and I set my mind to running. I'm going to be, a, I want to run. I want to, I want to, I want to be a runner. I, the first time I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Like I did, I really did. Like I, I, I ran, I don't, it was probably a half a mile. I ran half a mile and when I was living, I was, there were some hills in the neighborhood and, and so I'd try to run up these hills and, and, and I did, like there were, there were moments where I'm, I'm like, I, I'm sure people driving past were like, well, is he gonna be okay? Do I need to call 911? Because I'm hunched over and I'm grabbing my chest and I'm doing like this, I thought I was gonna die. And it took me a several months of thinking I was gonna die to get to the place where I'm like, you know what? I can do this. I had to train myself. I had to beat my body and make it myself. I had to press through and push through the challenge and the difficulty because it didn't feel natural. It didn't feel normal. It, I, I didn't want to do it. But it was something I said, I, I, this is gonna, I, I'm committed to this. I want to run. And the Bible talks about discipleship with similar language. 1 Timothy chapter 4. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, Paul talks about this. And he says, he says this, he's, he's talking to his protege, Timothy, and, and he's giving him some kind of like life lessons and some final advice. And he says this, and it's starting in verse 7, have nothing to do with irreverent silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is, for value, is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. He uses that word train. He says, listen, you, you gotta be committed. And there are gonna be times where you think, you, you, man, I can't do this. This is stupid. Man, I'm an, why am I doing this? This is dumb. This is so backwards. This can't be right. Or you, you, you step out and you try something. You're like, man, man I, I think I'm gonna, this is gonna kill me. Like, I can't do this thing. I can't get up and go to that Bible study. This is gonna kill me. I can't do it. Like he said, you, you gotta train yourself. You gotta train yourself for God and this. Other parts of the Apostle Paul talks about beating your body and making it your slave so that you can win the crown, so that you can win the prize. Training to be disciples. It's not just about showing up at church and saying, okay, Jay, you better be pretty good today because <laughs> this is my one dose of Jesus. Right, it's gotta carry me a whole week. Maybe two if I decide to go on vacation or I decide to sleep in. I'll, ca I'll catch you online. Like, uh, no, no, no. 
doesn't make you a disciple. You gotta train yourself for godliness. You gotta get in the word and you gotta read it. You gotta study it. When you come to something, you're like, man, that doesn't make any sense to me. Then you go figure out what it, what it means and how does it apply to your life. You, you, gotta, you gotta get face to face with other people. You need to get into a group. You need to get into a life group where you walk through some things together. And we talk about that a lot about, about life groups. And, and next week, we're gonna have this big, big thing. We're gonna pack all these meals and it's gonna be part of our, our, our life group's launch. Right, we're, every, we're gonna get these study guides for the book of Revelation. We're gonna challenge people to get in a group together, all that kind of stuff. You gotta get in one, even when it's uncomfortable. Even when it's like, man, it's Thursday. I had a long, busy day at work. I don't feel like going to group. I'll just text them and say, I'm not coming. Nah, that's not training. This year, man, you, this is part of, part of what Jesus said in the Great Commission. Teach people to obey. Teach them, train them. Show them how to be a disciple. It's gotta be central got to be part of the focus. We win people to Christ. We train them to be disciples. And then we send them out on mission. Look, look back at verse 19 again. Go is the first word. Go. Circle that. Underline it. Put stars around it. Go. It doesn't say stay. It doesn't say be fed. It says go. Go, therefore, and make disciples. Go and Share your faith. Go and get trained. Go and train other people. Go. It's a missionary faith. Christianity is. And so we win people to Christ. We train them to be disciples. And then we send people out on mission. We send them out to serve. We send them out to share. We send them out to help. We send people out to fix broken things and to right wrongs. We send people out to share the love of God with our neighbors, with our friends, with people in our country, with people around the globe. We send people out on mission. People ask me all the time, they're like, Jay, how, how, do, you, how do you find your purpose in life? Like, how, how did that work for you? How do you find, like, you say send people out on mission, like, okay, so, so does that mean just going to a foreign country? Or like, you know, because I, I don't know if I can eat the weird food or like, you know, whatever. I don't, I gotta, you know, I've got a career. I can't, you know, just up and move to Africa or whatever. Like, what, like how, how do you do that? Does, does, is that the only way? I said, no, what? no, there's so many ways to find that purpose, to be sent out on mission. And sometimes that happens right here. During this, this week, I was on vacation. So right after Christmas Eve services, I went and kind of just, and I usually, I do this, I take a week off and I just kind of decompress. And so we were on vacation and, and we had all these plans we were going to do. We were going to do all these projects. We were going to do all this stuff around the house. We had this big old laundry list. We didn't do any of them. Uh, like, like I half cleaned my garage and that was it. Like, because I was just tired. And so most of the time we just sat around and we snacked and ate food and, and we watched movies and we went and hung out with friends and we saw family because like, you know, again, we had these huge aspirations of what we we're going to do. And, and I looked at Carrie multiple times. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Like, <laughs> she's like, you want to get up and do that? No, I don't. I, do you want to put new baseboard? No, I don't. Um, do you want to? No, I don't. Like I said, because I was just tired. So that's all. I mean, I did that all week long. I just vegged out. It was great. It was the best staycation I've ever had. It was awesome. I love it. It's so good. Right, and so we watched a bunch of movies, and we watched this thing. And my kids love Disney Plus. And now that the Mandalorian is over, like we're always looking for new things to watch on Disney Plus. And so, so we, there's this brand new Disney movie called Soul. And we watched this movie together. And and th there's a truth in this in this movie that I thought was was powerful. And now understand, this is Disney, all right? So this is not theologically accurate, okay? So don't send me emails about, can't believe, you know, Disney is not theologically, like, okay, I get it, all right? It is not the Bible. I'm not saying Disney, okay, just, it's Disney, right? So let's all be, we're back together. But we watched this movie, Soul. And in this movie, there's this guy, he's a musician, and he's, he said, my purpose, his purpose in life was to play music, and he just loved music so much, and it was, it was his thing. And then he's, he gets his big break, and right before he plays his first show, he dies. He dies, and his soul, he ends up on this escalator, taking him to what they call in Disney, the great beyond. But he's not ready for that. He doesn't want to go because he's got, he's, he's, he, this is his purpose in life. Like, and so he wants to play music. So he jumps off the escalator, and he ends up in what Disney calls the great before, which is where all the souls wait until they go to heaven. And again, not theologically accurate, okay? This is not the Bible, so just, just relax. It's okay, though, all right? So there's a truth in here. 
Right, so he's, so he's, he's in this place, and he gets, he gets hooked up with soul number 22, which is like the bad soul like that, that, that can't, can never find its purpose, and has, has been in, it's been in this great before for like thousands and thousands of years. And so his whole thing is to help this soul find its purpose, or at least that's what they think. They've got to find their purpose. What's their purpose in life? And so they go through the movie and all this sort of stuff. And at the end of the movie, you find out that they're not really searching for their purpose, at least not yet. What they, what they need to find first and foremost is what they call in Disney, Disney language, the spark. What is it that sparks them? And when you find that spark, that can lead to you figuring out your purpose. And I love this analogy. And again, this is Disney, so it's not the Bible, it's not whatever. But I think there's, there's something here for us. I, I, and when I talk to people, like, what's my purpose in life? How do I know? How do I do this? I, I tell them all the time, what, what is it that just excites you? What's that spark? What's that spark? What is it that God has put into you that's just that, that spark where you say, wow, you know, I like that. Wow, that, you know, that, that, that excites me. That, that pumps me up. Like, I could do that. What's that spark? And I'm convinced that so often God uses that, that little spark to help us find our purpose, to help us find our mission in life, to help us find that thing that causes us to go, you know what, I want to use that to reach people for Jesus. I want to use that as my vehicle to share the gospel. It's the spark that God puts in us. And I've seen this happen so many times in my life. I, I had a friend of mine who, he, he well, he, now he runs this incredible prison ministry. It's this global prison ministry. And it, he didn't set out in life to run a global prison ministry. It's not like at 18 years old he said, you know what, I want to run this nationwide, this, this span the globe prison ministry that reaches inmates on the inside. He didn't start out that way. When he was in his 40s, he was trying to figure out, okay, how do I, what, what's, this, what's my mission in life? And I want to go out and what's this, get sent out on a mission. What's that look like? And how do I go and make disciples? Well, God, what are, you, what are you doing with me? What are you doing for me? God, what do you want me to do for you? Like he was trying to figure it out. And their church had this, this little tiny prison ministry. They would go into the local jail and they would play a couple of old hymns on, on the broken piano and then somebody would preach a message and they had some snacks for the inmates and, and somebody asked them and said, hey, um, we need somebody to run the snack table. Can you come and run the snack table? And he said, yeah, I can do that. That's fine. I don't have anything going on. I can come run the snack table. And in that moment, when he tells the story, he, he said, you know what? Something clicked for me. That you know what? I, I could do more here. I could do something here. Maybe this is what God is calling me to. Not running the snack table, but, but helping inmates find Jesus. And, and so he, he started with just standing at the snack table talking to people. And then that turned into, hey, can I preach the, the message? Or, hey, can I find some, some more people to do music? Hey, can, can we start a whole ministry in this one little prison? Hey, what about if we, we, we expanded it to a couple other prisons? Because where we live, there was, there was 13 prisons in this one town, which is, that's a whole other thing. But like there's, there's like these, third, and so it like expanded to all these other prisons. And then it expanded to other states. And then it expanded around the globe. And it started with him at a snack table in his 40s. And God used that and said, here's what I created you to do. It's not just about when you're 18, right? God can show up at any point in your life and say, here's that spark. Here's that purpose. And so often in my experience, it begins right here at the church. It begins when you step up and say, okay, I'm going to serve here. I'm going to go help in the nursery. And God uses that to, to move your heart. I'm going I'm to stand out. I'm going to help with coffee. He uses that to move your heart. He used that to say, okay, here's, here's, here's a vehicle that you can use to begin to share the gospel. And it may turn into this global ministry. It may not. It may just be you feeling, like just filling this one role at the local church. God uses it so many things in so many ways to help us live this out, to go and make disciples. And we see this in Scripture. We see this kind of this process, how this works in Scripture. In the book of Acts, chapter 1. It's another account of Jesus' ascension. It's another account of the, the, the launch of the church. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus says this, But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit's come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Jesus says sometimes it begins just right here in Jerusalem. 
It begins right here in Jerusalem, and then that leads to Judea and Samaria, and then that leads to the ends of the earth. And not everybody's going to go be a missionary in some foreign country to the ends of the earth, but maybe you will. I don't know. But, but for so many people, it begins right in Jerusalem, right here in your home church, in your hometown. It's one of the reasons we challenge people to get involved in serving right here at Northwest. It's because God uses that so often in so many lives to, to open our eyes to see that, hey, you know what? Maybe that'll lead to this. And maybe I'll become a teacher. And then maybe I'll become an evangelist. And then maybe, who knows what God's going to do in that. Sometimes it begins right in Jerusalem. And so this year, man, if, if you're not serving anywhere, if you're not plugged into a ministry, and maybe you're sitting there going, okay, what is my purpose? I don't know. Try something. Get connected. Try plugging in and saying, okay, well, I can try that till I find that thing. I can try that till I find that thing. You may end up like my friend who started at a snack table and ended up running a global ministry. Maybe not. Who knows? I encourage you to try something this year. It's going to be part of our focus in 2021. Win people to Christ. Train them to be disciples. Send them out on mission. It's our focus for our church, and my hope and my prayer is that it'll be your focus as well that you'll refocus and reorient your life on winning people to Christ, training people to be disciples, getting sent out and sending people out on mission. So as we wrap up this morning, here's what I wanna do. I want you thinking about those three words, win, train, send. I want you thinking about the Great Commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. Surely I'm with you always to the end of the age. I want you thinking about those people you know that, that are outside of Christ that need to hear the gospel, that need to hear it from you. I want you thinking about, okay, 2021, how am I gonna be trained? How am I gonna beat my body and make it my slave so that I can be trained as a disciple? I want you thinking about, okay, where am I serving? Am I out on mission? What am I doing? Maybe it's here in Jerusalem. Maybe it's Judea, Samaria. Maybe it's the end of the earth. I don't know. I want you thinking about that this morning as you reflect on Christ. As you take that bread that represents the body of Jesus, and you take that cup that represents the blood of Jesus that was poured out for you and for me on that cross 2,000 years ago. As we begin this new year, I want you thinking about those three words, win, train, send. And I want you to talk to God and say, okay, God, what do I do? Not what does Jay do or anybody else in this room. What do I do? What do you want from me this year? Let me pray for us, and then we'll take communion together. Heavenly Father, God, you've called us, all of us. You've called this church and everybody in this church, everybody who's, who's sitting here this morning, everybody who's watching online, everybody who's gonna watch later. God, you've called us to this, this place. We are asking us to go and make disciples. And that's not just for professional Christians, that's for all of us. You want us winning people to, to Christ. You want us training others and being trained to be disciples. You want us sent out on mission. Whether that's here or around the globe, God, that's, that's, your, that's your heartbeat for us. God, and, and we need that to be our heartbeat. God, I'm praying that as we reflect on Jesus in this moment, as we remember your son crucified 2,000 years ago on our behalf, God, I'm praying that you will spark something in people's minds. You will spark something in people's hearts. That they will begin to think about the people that they can talk to, that they know that need to hear the gospel. God, that you will take the excuses away. God, speak and spark in, in everyone here that desire to be trained, that desire to push through the challenge, to push through the pain sometimes. Say, I want to be a disciple, not just a church attendee. God, would you spark in in, in everybody here and everybody that's watching this desire to find that mission, to find that purpose, to be sent out in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, the ends of the earth, God, would you, would you give them the strength to begin to try things if they've never found that thing, God, that, that they will begin to try right here. 
and to have their eyes open to what you have for them and how you want to use them to spread your kingdom beyond these four walls. God, would you speak that into us now as we remember your son? Oh, we just love you so much. We thank you for this moment. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's all stand up and sing this together. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord. comes my way when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay God bless you guys. Have an amazing week. We'll see you back next Sunday. Thank you all.